Hello ladies and gentlemen, I'm Fireman Dan, welcome back to another Space Engineers tutorial. This time we are going to be covering Izzy's Inventory Manager. I just did a video on Tim, Taladin Inventory Management. The link will be up there in the top corner for it. Now, if you watch that video, or if you're familiar with Tim, you will know that Taladin no longer manages the script and other co content creators have taken over it. Um, so depending on which version you use, depends whether or not Tim works. And that is subject to change, and that depends on whether or not they actually keep up with it. So, another backup is Izzy's. This is Izzy's Inventory Manager. It can do pretty much everything that Tim can do. Um, and it may or may not be a little bit easier to set up, depending on how familiar, how familiar you are with it. Uh, what you want to do. Um, what else? Let's see. Izzy, some of the stuff, you just change numbers around. Where Tim's, you actually got to type it in. And I will show you what I'm talking about when we get to that point. Now, when we do this, I am going to follow along on the guide here. Just to make things easier. And if you pull up this guide, you will see what I am looking at. And you have an idea of what you are doing as well. So to get, let's, to get started, we are going to go over and we are going to go into the cargo container sorting. So basically what this does is it sorts your cargo or and gets components, your tools, your ammo, and your bottles, aka your oxygen and hydrogen bottles. With Tim, or yeah, Tim, with Izzy's running, all you really got to do is just type in what you want in the name. So or and gets components, yada, yada, yada. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. So I got three cargo, well, five cargo containers, but we'll get to that in a moment. Three cargo containers here, and I got pretty much everything. I got components, I got ore, ingots, uh, bottles, and rifles, and tools. Now the cool thing about this is, if there is no name in it as you see right now i got everything in here just so i can have everything balanced in one cargo container if you do not do not have something selected it will automatically do it for you so let's say i did not have a cargo container for ores but i had a free one right here which this is a free one there's nothing in it this script will automatically assign that cargo container for ore so let's just show this in action here. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to going to remove. Let's see here. Let's keep let's keep ore in this first one. Let's cut that out. Ores. Give it a second for the script to run. Boom. All my ores. If I come over here, I got ingots. See? Yep. Well, oh, that's ores and ingots. Um. Ingots. Wars and gets 2.3. So it automatically assigned it. So let's remove the wars from there. Come over to this one. We have components. And we'll come over to this one. This one has tools, ammo, and bottles. So if I look, uh, tools, ammo, and my bottles. We'll come back to that one. So you can actually come along and you can assign each cargo container individually, or you can select what you want in them. There is an option in here. Well, we'll get to that. So up next, uh, exclude cargos from sorting. I'm not going to not going to do that. But if you add locked in, into the name, then the script will not use that cargo container. So what that what's that good for? It, let's say let's say this cargo container. I want to take everything in this cargo container and I'm going to move it to another base way up on that mountaintop. If I put locked in this name, this script will not touch this cargo container and I can move whatever I want into this cargo container for say like let's say like a pre pre-tasking so I know that hey I need to move everything in this cargo container into a shuttle or transport to move up to that mountaintop. Uh, let's see, so, from sorting, exclude items from counting, same thing, this is, if you don't want to see whatever is in a certain ship, 
basically. And all you do is add, add hit into that. Hit into the name of, say, your ship or cargo container. Exclude grids from sorting. It's same thing as I just mentioned about going up that hilltop, that hilltop over there in the corner. If you do not want the script to touch your transport, you just put no sorting in the name. To completely ignore a grid, add the no IMM keyword to a connector. This is no I am no Izzy's inventory manager. So if I were to put this into the name of in one of my connectors, the grid will not touch that connector. Container priorities. By adding P and the number to a container name, it will prioritize which ones fill first. So if you add if you go back and watch my Tim's video, you will see I added priorities to containers. Priority one, priority two, priority three, the ones one filled first. So if I add, let's do this. Large cargo container back here. And I add ores onto this, right? And then I add this right here, which is the bracket, priority number of the bracket. And we'll do this. Bracket, priority two, bracket. Back here, uh, back to the name. Bracket, priority one, bracket, right? Wait for that to catch up. See, she, she how it's, uh, turn it, capital. So what this means is both of these cargo containers are set for war, right? That's set for war. That's set for war, but this has a priority higher, lower the number, the higher than this one. So cargo container one will fill up before cargo container two. Now container balancing. This is off by default, and that is because it can cause. What did you say that? Um, 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 it can. It's heavy like uh, performance heavy and it can crash the script. This is basically balances everything out between cargo containers. So what I mean by that is uh, that cargo container that I just deleted, if that was ore, this and this would balance out. So if I had 10,000 iron, it would be 5,000 in here, 5,000 in there. Use this, as it says right here, Read this carefully. This feature, however, is very instruction heavy and could crash the script if you have many containers of the same type. Successfully tested with 15 component container, containers. Use it with your own, use it at your own risk. While it will not hurt the world, the script will quit running and you'll have to come over and hit, hit recompile on it. Use it at your own risk. Auto assigning new containers. This is what I just told you that this will automatically assign containers if you don't have room or you don't have one 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 assigned. I just showed that showed that to you. Automatic bottle refilling. By default, this script will try to move any incoming bottles to the first found O2H2 generators. So these bottles right here are currently empty, right? Down here on the end. I have an H2 generator, um, and I, I intentionally did not connect it up because I wanted to come back to that, but let's do this right here. So come all the way over here, right? Oh. Should automatically move ice over as well. See? I'll come back to that in a moment. But I see the bottles are coming over here, and boom, they're gone. Let's come back into this cargo container, and all these bottles are full. So what does this mean is you're flying around, flying around, flying around, and uh-oh, my hydrogen bottle is empty. I could come over to any cargo container, drop a hydrogen bottle. Actually, we'll use this one. Drop that hydrogen bottle in there. 
that's empty. It's not really empty, but that will come over to here automatically, get filled, and then automatically come back to the main storage. Show high fill levels or no conveyor connections. So this is found in the script itself. I'm, I'm not going to touch it, but basically what that is, is if you look in the name, this right here. So by looking at the name of any of your cargo container, you can see how full they are. Or if there's no conveyor connection. Internal inventory sorting. The internal inventory sorting stores items in an inventory by name, amount, or type. By default, it is deactivated because it can lead to inventory desynchronization and multiplayer. Use at your own risk. I'm not going to touch it because I play a lot of multiplayer with my friends. So, special loadout containers. Special loadout containers is basically where you can select what you want in a certain cargo container. Going back to my Tim's video, if you watch it, you will see that I have a little trick that I do where I will place small cargo, cargo containers at key, key places throughout my base. And the reason I do that is A, easy access to the, my inventory system to begin with, because I got all these ports everywhere. B, I can keep ammunition, weapons, tools, or hydrogen and oxygen bottles in easy access. So, if this cargo container was in my hangar, I can come over and just grab what I want. And C, I use a lot of mods when I, when I play with my friends. And one of the things we use is the build and repair systems. The build and repair systems automatically build whatever you place down. So, if you're in survival world and I go to place this cargo, this conveyor sorter, it will not come up completed, right? It'll come up as like a, a grid, metal grid. And then you have to pull out a welder and weld it up with the components. That mod automatically does that for you. But you need a single component to get it started. You can have... You, there are four components in the game that start... That are required to start all everything else. That is an interior plate, steel plate, girders, and, and construction components. As long as you have those four things in your inventory, you can start construction of every component in the game. Or every uh, block in the game. So therefore, if I got these little cargo containers everywhere, and I got f those four items in it, I could come over to any one of them anywhere, no matter where I'm building, and I could just grab one of those, and then keep, and then keep going. So how does this work? So, you just add special to the name of a cargo container, right? And then in, in your custom data, you just choose what you want. So in this case, four components. Now, this only has four components in it. Two, three, four. Because of this right here. When I started this little platform, I only put four components in it, so the script only recognizes four components. We'll come back to that. So that means we'll come back to that as well. All right, up next is auto crafting. So for auto crafting, when you come in here, you just come into your creator LCD, come in and name it auto crafting, and this list comes up. This comes up as the items you have. So in order for this to work, you need to make one of everything. So I'm here, take this out. Production, so one, 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 one. I think that's pretty much one of everything. It should be sorted up, conveyor up. So production. Oh, wow. That's why it wasn't working for me earlier. So come into production and it will make one of everything for you. Alright, 
glad it's doing this, making one of everything. Iron. I know I got iron ingots. Should be this one. Maybe I don't have iron ingots. Similar, similar. Oh, maybe I don't have iron ingots. Okay, uh. Let's go Alt F10. Oops, Shift F10. Iron ingots. Put in a thousand. This is make. Now this will make everything on the list. Don't bounce around too. That's just a script on it. So, now that we have all these items crafted up, you see it's auto-crafting, right? These are all the items in the list. What you come in here is you just change the wanted number. So let's say, I don't know, let's pick something. Medical components, I want two medical components. Come back and change this to two. All right, so it says one equals two. That's because you have currently one and you want it to, and it's just waiting for it to be made. Let's find out which one of these are doing it. Missing item, iron. Why is it missing iron? I put a bunch of iron in this thing. Where is the iron? Where is that iron going? Oh, I bet you. I wonder if this script is, is removing it. Uh, or ingots, iron, one one twelve. Well, not, doesn't don't have any iron ingots. Where is this iron going? That's weird. Okay, let's follow this. Iron spawn in a target container. Oh, and iron. Hmm. The thing I can think of is a script is eating it up somewhere, trying to build stuff. So, that's basically what happens. You just put in what you want, change it. Uh, how many you want and it'll tell you how many you have and how many you need that's auto crafting there's auto also auto disassembling so let's say you want well my missing iron back or you only want so many of something you got you you enable the auto disassembly and in order to do that you come over here you actually got to edit the programmable block and you scroll down until you find the auto crafting session. Auto assembling false. Turn that to true. T R U E. Okay. Now here's what happens. Back to the auto crafting screen. Let's say I don't want 133 interior plates. Let's say I only want 100 interior plates. The script is each will automatically take away. However, however many it is to equal that number. So as you see here, we got 76 bulletproof glass. We want 50. We got 101. We want 100. 51, and we want five gravity. 124. Oh, well, see, bang. So now there's a way you can turn this on and not delete stuff. So let's say you want as many still plates as you can possibly get. Right, so 
you set your quota for I don't know, however many. Where's the stool plates in here? Stool plate eleven hundred. Let's say you set your stool, your quota for eleven hundred. You go out, you find an enemy base or something, you grind it down. And you want to keep all the stool plates because you're planning on building a large ship. That's where the modifiers come in, right? Let's come in here. Let's go down here. The auto crafting LCD. Let's go for the tag. Modifiers. These are five modifiers that can be added to wanted item amount that will change the way auto crafting handles these items. These modifiers can be set on a per item level. Assemble only, disassemble only. Always queue first, so this is your priority. Hide and manage the background or hidden and ignore. So, after your wanted number, that's where you put them in. So, your steel plates are the most important because you're going to be building a large ship. So, we want A for assemble only, and boom. So, no matter what, the script will never de delete the, the plates. So, if I come over here, which one's going to pause? Uh, yes. So if I come over here, come down and find my steel plates. Uh, find my steel plates. Spawn a target container. Come back. Give it a second here. Steel plates. Nope. Wait for the script to catch up. I got 2,100 steel plates, and I only, I'm only asking for 1,100, but this auto disassembly is not removing them because I put the A after it. All right, uh, refiner, refinery handling, it's done automatically, as you've seen earlier. O2 generator, ice balancing, and reactor uranium balancing. So what this means is it will automatically move ice around and uranium around into multiple H2 generators or multiple reactors while also keeping some back in your cargo containers. So how this basically works is... Let's see, you can... Da, 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 da. To change the value to true or false to activate or deactivate a certain feature, ice field levels in present order will be filled to fill bottles, default 95, so, same thing with uranium. So let's go back to the script. Hit it. Let's find this in here now. So that's automatic container, auto crafting, special loadout, refinery handling, O2 generation handling. By default, it's 90%. Note. O2 HU generators will pull more ice automatically if value falls below 60%. Ice fill level percentage is 90. So let's change this to... Mm, I don't know... 50%. Same thing with the reactors. Uh, amount of uranium in each reactor default is 100 for large grids, 25 for small grid reactors. And um, let's say I want a thousand for large grid and 250 for small grid. Okay, let's come back here. So, we'll give that to, give that a second catch up. So let's throw down a small grid reactor here. Right. Make it easy to access. So that's 52. Oh. Edit. Let's come back down here. Oh, 
automatically pull more if it's below 60%. Uh, Alright, let's change that to 75 then. I want 250 in there. Well, what if I change that to... Cause... Oh, small grid. Though I'm a bonehead. Uh, Alright, let's change that to... Just to see it in action, 1100. Okay. Here as well. Give this the script a second to catch up. Let's, let's get 5k in there, 1100 in there. So that is the H2, the reactor, and refinery handling. Like I said, refinery automatic, assemblers are as long as you got the auto crafting turned on, assemblers are automatic. H2 generators, they automatically refill and the bottles automatically get filled or put back. Your reactors are, are automatically get filled depending on what number you put in. Last up is inventory screens. So, first things first. LCD panel, inventory item, LCDs. So this right here, so that's an explanation point, IMM, so that's Izzy's Inventory Manager, I-M, I-I-M, right, dash inventory. Build an OCD panel and put that in the name, and it changes to this, Izzy LCD. Once that is said and done, and the script catches up to it, right, because the script's got to cycle and run its commands, you come into the custom data and you see this right here, at zero, IIM inventory. The zero is the screen you want. In this case, there's only one screen. If it was, say, this programmable block and there's two screens, you could change it to one and then it'll come up on a different screen. You put what you want in it. In this case, I put component in it. Now, where did I get component from? This list right here. Ingot component or ammo magazine, oxygen container, which is oxygen bottles, gas container object, which is hydrogen bottles, physical gun object, which is all weapons and tools. So that's where I'm getting my components from for my inventory. For ingots, same thing. Put, put, put the IIM dash inventory in the name. This comes up and I want ingots. Shows me all my ingots. Ores. Shows me my ores. And in this one, I put several different ones in. I put the ammo magazine, I put the oxygen and gas, and physical gun, gun objects. So now I see ammo I got. No items containing oxygen container objects found. That's because I have no oxygen bottles in the, in the inventory system. Hydrogen bottles. I got five hydrogen bottles. And physical gun object. I got hand drill item number four, which is the elite hand drills. I got five of those in here. Ultimate automatic rifle item. I got five of those in here. And to show you that, we'll come to this one. One, two, three, four, five. And one, two, three, four, and five. And the ammo, obviously. Uh, what else can you do? You can come in, you can type in sub data so you just show steel plates only um a combination ingots gold so or so that that you got could be ore stone or gold ingot stones so it shows all gravel or put a partial name and a custom data so plate this shows all items containing plates steel plate interior plate etc this shows all items containing welders or you can have custom text Lastly, the one one more thing I need to show you is with the auto crafting. If you are using a modded items, the script doesn't recognize them initially. So there's two things you can do. You can do I learn or I learn many. So what you would do, you put this I learn, and 
the name of your assembler, right? And then you build whatever it is. So let's say Bulletproof Glass was a modded item. Build a hundred of them. And the script will learn this item and it will automatically take away the I learned by itself. As you see, learning Bulletproof Glass. Let's see. So that modded item would now be on your list, okay? If you want need to learn many of them, let's say that mod comes with five different items. I know some weapon mods up there, like ammunition, you can have 10, 15 different types of ammo for that for that mod. You do the same thing, but learn. I learn many, right? I learn many, build all of them up, so 100, 100, 100, 100, 100. And once these are all done building, You yourself have to re remove that from the from the list, and I think that just about covers everything. We went over cargo sorting, uh, excluding cargo priorities, the balancing, auto assigning, automatic auto refills, uh, special loadout containers. I did not do the special loadout containers. So special loadout containers coming back. I know I talked about it briefly, but come in here, custom data. This is everything here. So I want interior plates 50. I want uh, I would want girders, but I don't see that in the list. Gravity girder should be right there. Construction component, we'll do 50. And we'll find the gas, ammo, ammo, physical gun object, physical gun data pad. Hydrogen bottle. And let's come over here and build some girders. Girders. I don't get why my iron keeps disappearing. I got my construction, my interior plates, my steel plates, my hydrogen bottle, and the girder whenever the script sends it over. There we go. That's special items. So ladies and gentlemen, if you enjoyed this uh, little easy script uh, tutorial, please like the video. Please subscribe to the channel if you have not subscribed. This is the backup. Well, I don't know if I should call this the backup for Tim or Tim's the backup for this, but. Just to give you another option of something else you can use. This is Fireman Dan. I will see you next time in Space Engineers.